Yeah, thank you. Now, on behalf of uh, the in-laws, the daughters-in-laws of Jaramogi, I want to invite uh, Minpin, Dr. Aida Odinga, to come and uh, say a few words. So, Aida, karibu. Minpin. Hello? Yes. Hello? Yes. Are you happy? Yes. I'm also very happy. Uh, all protocols observed. And you do Toman Chen Kuna Neno, who can acquire you? Today is a very special day because I've been requested to say something about my father-in-law. 30 years ago, by the time my father-in-law was passing on, he had four uh, daughters-in-law led by, were led by Dr. Anoburu. Is Anne here? Dr. Anoburu. Unfortunately, Anne is not here. There was Margaret Agola. Margaret is gone. She's deceased. She's no longer there. And then there was uh, Tabu Osewe who is here. Tabu is a MCA elected MCA in Bondo, Sakwa West. And the fourth one is me. So today, today this mantle has fallen on me to talk on behalf of Jeramogi. Now, when I got married in that home, that is about 50 years ago. Again, you have to go to the house and you have to go to the house and you have to go to the house. When I got married in that home 50 years ago, let me say, when I first met Jaramogi, I was so scared because I didn't know I was going to meet such a great man. My boyfriend then, <laughs> my boyfriend then, Lodinga, cheated me that he was taking me for a ride from Kisumu. Nitabwe. <laughs> Nitabwe. Then he took me for a ride and we went on, on passing some villages and some bushes. Eventually, arrest. we arrived in a home that looks really good. The home was well organized. And I asked him, where is this? Then he told me, this is my home. I was so shocked. I said, why didn't you tell me that you are coming to your home? Because I would have prepared myself mentally and even dress-wise, I would have prepared myself. Then I was not dressed like this. But then, when we got there, the next thing he told me, come and meet my father. Who are you to meet the great Jaramogyogingo Dinga? I was damn scared. I almost fainted, but I didn't. So I met the old man for the first time. He was such a nice person. He talked nicely. And in the end, he gave me, was it 200 shillings? That was a long time ago. And he said, go buy soda on your way. That was Jaramogi. I think from that day, he made very quick arrangements for me to get married. And that's why I'm here, standing here today. <laughs> Jaramogi, as a father-in-law, was a very, very kind person to all of us daughters-in-law. He used to talk to us nicely. During Christmas, he used to give us gifts. I remember one time he gave me perfume. I think he, I don't know what he gave Anna. By that time, uh, Tab was not there. He stood by us when things were difficult and when things were good. We used to celebrate a lot in his presence. 
But I'll talk about myself. During the time in the late 80, in the early 80s, when Raila was arrested and eventually charged with treason and was thrown there in committee, I went to Jaramogi and I said, you know what? Do you know he's been charged with treason? And I've read to what well the Constitution says and says the only verdict is death. He laughed and told me, don't worry. Those things will not happen. I don't know whether he believed it or he was just trying to encourage me to know that things were okay. That was Jaramogi. He would always encourage me and encourage all of us. There was also that soon after that, he was put under house arrest here in Kisumu. But for the first three months, I was allowed to go and see him in Kisumu. Later on, I was barred from even walking on Taifa Road. Taifa Road is that road where his house is. I was told, I was written, I was given a letter that restricted me from either walking on Taifa Road or driving along Taifa Road or being anywhere near Milimani. Those were the rules those days. Anybody could make a rule and that rule stood. So I was not able to see him. But later on, after that, I lost my job, the first sacking, or the first retirement, 1988. Later on, he told me, don't worry about those people. You know, there are many ways that people can live. You don't only have to be employed to live. There are many things you can do. And he started training me on how to do other things. He started training me on how to manage people and how to manage uh, some businesses. And I still do that up to today. My greatest teacher that modeled me was Mzee Jaramogi Oginga Udinga. I know most of you ask, why weren't you modeled by your father? My father died when I was about seven years old. So I grew up without a father. I didn't know what the responsibilities of fathers in the homes. I thought my mother was everything, and actually she was everything. But I didn't know that there could be a father. When I met Jeremogi and I became one of the daughters-in-law, he loved me dearly. And I used to say, so this is how those people with fathers feel. I found a father, a real father in Jeremogi. And... Um, his passing actually still hurts us up to today. In my speeches, where I work, whatever I do, I always refer to him that Jaramogi would not do it like this. Or when somebody confronts me with problems, I said, what would Jaramogi say? What would Jaramogi do? He was a great teacher. He was a great father-in-law. He was a great friend. And with those few remarks, we thank God and we wish, we pray to God to rest his soul in eternal peace. Thank you. Thank you very much, Min Peng. She